What's up guys and welcome back to another video. First of all, I hope you're all doing well. Now today we are going to be taking a look inside a celebrity's private car collection. We do this once a week, every Sunday. And the way it works is all you have to do is comment down below the name of a celebrity you'd like us to cover. And next week we'll take the most recurring name. Now last week, a bunch of you commented to see Drake. So that's exactly who we're going to be covering today. A man who needs absolutely no introduction, singer, songwriter, producer, he's done so many things, he's done a bunch of acting as well. Very, very successful man, also known as Champagne Puppy on Instagram. Now, his estimated net worth on Google is between 180 to 200 million dollars. I personally think it's probably a lot more than that. Very hard to know, you can never really realistically know, but considering he's just got in a plane that some people estimate to be worth 180 million dollars alone, seems like his net worth would probably be a little bit higher than that. Basically, long story short, the man is extremely wealthy and he's used some of that wealth on some really rather tasty cars. So we're gonna be going over that today and we're gonna start with his luxury cars. Now, like a lot of these rappers, singers, actors, businessmen in America, about 10 years ago, the thing to have was a Maybach. Now, Maybach has since changed and kind of just become a trim level for the luxurious Mercedes. But back then, even though it wasn't that long ago, it was completely different. Maybach was its own standalone brand owned by Mercedes, but they had their own models. They had two models, the 57S, the 62S, being basically an extended longer version of the 57S. Now, absolutely stunning. These are obviously worth a lot of money back in the day, 350 to 400 thousand dollars. Now that's a lot of money in anyone's book, but if you adjust that for inflation as well in today's money, it's a ton. Anyways, they're not worth that much anymore. They got hit pretty hard with depreciation, but uh, Drake was actually rolling around in the 62S for quite a while. So he was seen in several different ones, but this one that we see in the video is the one he was seen in the most, um, showing up to an event. So we presume this was his and wasn't a rented car. Clearly, Maybach is something that he enjoyed. He's since bought himself a Mercedes G-Wagon 650 Maybach Londolet. Now, Londolet is a name that they actually use as well on the 62S, they had a version which was convertible just for the rear passengers because that's who you focus on in a Maybach. And they've taken this concept and applied it to the G-Wagon based on the 6x6 platform or 4x4 squared. So the raised G-Wagon platform. Uh, it's a massive, massive thing. V12, 650 horsepower, only 99 produced worldwide worth close to the million dollar mark. Very, very rare, very expensive. And everything's focused around those rear passengers with a divide to the driver in the front business class type seats in the back, and the ability to take the roof off. Really, really cool car. I was lucky enough to actually embark on a road trip in one of these through Sweden in the winter, where we had the roof off in minus 15 degree temperatures, and the car kept us perfectly comfortable. So, awesome thing. Drake has one of these. So as you can tell, he's already got taste for the luxurious, more expensive things in his garage. Yet another Mercedes Maybach is the S-Class Pullman. Now, it's, we don't have any photos of him with this car, photos or videos, but there were so many articles claiming that one of the Pullmans went to Drake's car collection. So I'm putting it in here, can't confirm it 100%, but would be cool and it seems like it's his kind of car. It's effectively a limousine version of the Mercedes S-Class Maybach. So inside, rather than having two seats in the back, you've got four now, two smaller seats that you can kind of fold down and they've got TVs as well in them, or, you can sit in the business class type seat, similar to what Drake will have in his G650. I mean, how do you decide what to take at this point? You've got a 62S Pullman G650. When you want to be comfortable, you've basically just got all the best cars in the business for it. Now, he's also got a Rolls Royce Phantom, just in case you can't decide which Maybach you want. You've got a Rolls Royce Phantom. Not any Phantom, the latest Phantom, the Phantom 8, also modified by Mansouri. It's called the Bushukan Phantom by Mansouri. So Mansouri is a company which effectively tune, they modify cars, but they have the tendency to take the cars from the most luxurious brands out there. They've worked with Bugatti, they've worked with Ferrari, Lamborghini, Rolls, Bentley, all of the high-end stuff. And they add a very particular look. Now, 
It's not for everyone, uh, I have to admit. I'm not sure I would I would do this to my Rolls Royce or Bugatti or whatever it may be if one day I were lucky enough to have one of these cars. But it's quite something, that's for sure. I mean, and a lot of work goes into it. It's extremely expensive to have this done to your car. Phantom Mate, to start with, is hugely expensive. 500, 600,000 uh, dollars. Now the kit is probably worth 200 to 250, 300 thousand dollars. So really, really expensive to put this on your car. How do I know this was his? Well, basically Drake showed up as a surprise at one of Tyler, the creator's concerts and backstage, uh, there was this Rolls Royce Phantom 8, which Tyler, the creator said was not his. So naturally was probably Drake's completely tuned by Mansouri, full kit outside, inside. Now on the outside, uh, they've completely redone the front of the car, they've redone the back, for example. Usually you have these really subtle dual exhaust tips. Now you've got these more aggressive quad tips. The whole front end's been just completely redone, 24 inch wheels. Now they say it helps with the aer aerodynamics. Who cares, to be honest, if it's more aerodynamic, as long as it's comfortable. Now the 24 inch wheels probably make it a little less comfortable than it would have been originally. But they've redone a bit on the interior as well. And yeah, I mean, it's very particular, it certainly stands out, and it's certainly a statement of wealth, which does Drake need to state that anymore at this point? I mean, the guy's literally got an airplane with his name on the side of it. Everyone knows he's financially stable. In case the message didn't get across by the time you've got your three Maybachs pulled up, your tuned Phantom 8, why don't you throw a few Bentleys in there so that people really understand quite how wealthy you are. Awesome. Uh, Bentley's in the collection for Drake. He started off with a Continental uh, GT Super Sports, which was a hardcore, lightened version of the Bentley Continental GT. Top of the range, most expensive. Um, looks cool, you can kind of tell it apart from that more beefy front end. W12, which was the only option back then on the first Continental GTs, but then when the facelift came across, it was offered with a V8. Drake picked one of these up and actually used it in his Started From The Bottom video a white Bentley Continental GT C V8, GTC meaning it's the convertible version of the GT, C standing for convertible or cabriolet. Awesome looking thing and another third Bentley to line things up properly is the Bentley Mulsanne. Um, so kind of the rival from Bentley towards Rolls Royce and their Phantom. Bentley Mulsanne is the five door luxury car in the Bentley lineup whereas the Continental GT is the two door coupe. There's the flying spur which kind of bridges the gap between the two, but uh, Drake directly went for the most expensive, the most luxurious, and had it finished in white, which looks really, really cool. That's it for the luxury cars. Basically, anything you can dream of in the luxury car department, Drake has. Now for supercars, he's got, and hypercars actually, he's got quite a few of these. So, he's actually got a real connoisseur's car, a McLaren 675LT. This is a limited edition, lightened and slightly more powerful version of the 650S. So the 650S, as the name indicates, at 650 horsepower, 675 LT, they've bumped that up 25, brought it to a total of 675 horsepower out of a twin turbocharged V8, which is used in basically all of the McLarens. Now the LT stands for long tail. They've made the car slightly longer at the back, kind of as an homage towards the historic F1, but also to help um, with the aerodynamics of the car. Limited to 500 coupes and 500 spiders worldwide, without counting the carbon editions and 688 MSO editions. It's an extremely rare car and a real connoisseur's piece and one of, I think, the best McLarens ever produced. So really cool to see Drake having one of these in the collections and he gets some really, really cool cars. Now he didn't stop there. McLaren, he continued, but this time it is a collaboration between McLaren and Mercedes with the SLR Roadster. So he didn't go for the 722, he got the standard, if you can ever call it that, SLR Roadster. This is a V8 twin turbo as well, slightly more beefy, kind of AMG sounding V8. A really rare car, extremely expensive, these were around 350,000 euros when they came out. Came down all the way to about 150, but now I've been shooting back up way over the 200,000 euro mark. Awesome looking cars, hypercar royalty back in the day and still today, I mean competing with the Crow GT and the Enzo, they haven't appreciated quite as much as those, but they're on their way and eventually they'll be worth an absolute fortune, so a good one for Drake to keep in the collection. Now a slightly less arguably classy car than these is the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster. Uh, now this seems to kind of be a, if you're a successful businessman or rapper living in LA and you wanna buy a supercar, you have to have an Aventador. It's a spaceship looking V12, naturally aspirated, 700 horsepower Lamborghini, four wheel drive, looks absolutely awesome. His is the first generation, so they've since come out with an S, 
an SV, an SVJ, different versions. But here's the LP700-4. Looks awesome. He's had the rims changed on it and actually used this in a music video as well. But I don't believe it was rented. I actually think it was one of his because he was also seen taking it out around LA and driving it around as you would in your own personal car. So when you're Drake, you don't need to rent cars for your music videos. You just simply open the garage and take a pic. That's some of the supercars. I'm sure there's plenty more, but some of the supercars out of the way. Let's talk hypercars. Now, the first car that Drake was really, really famous for owning was his Bugatti Veyron Song Noir. Now, lots of rumors that he was gifted this car. Did he buy it? Was he gifted it? I don't know, but he definitely owned it at one point. Not sure if he still owns it. This car he kept in Toronto, which is where he's building a huge mansion and he kind of seems to split his time between New York, LA and Toronto. He actually spends quite a bit of time in London as well. Now, it's a really special limited edition version of the Bugatti Veyron. You guys all know the Bugatti Veyron, um, 407 kilometer an hour top speed, 250 two miles per hour, I believe that is. 1,001 horsepower, W16, so basically two V8s glued together, four turbochargers and more radiators than you have in your house. Drinks its fuel in just over 10 minutes. I mean, it is an absolute animal. The Sang Noir, as the name indicates, Noir meaning black, the company is originally French as well, basically means blacked out. So they haven't changed anything mechanically to the car. Uh, it's just aesthetic changes. So the lights have been blacked out. Everything is blacked out around the car, apart from the interior, which is orange for some reason. Looks very, very cool. And actually Drake was driving this car around quite a bit. And it's very, very Drake, very over the top to have not only a Bugatti, but one of the most well-known limited editions of the Bugatti Veyron. All the other rappers, celebrities who have a Bugatti, like, cool, you have a Bugatti, but I have the rarest Bugatti. And in case that wasn't quite enough, I'm gonna go buy another hypercar, this time the Ferrari LaFerrari. The Bugatti Veyron and the LaFerrari seem to be the two cars that if you really made it in LA, in show business, in Hollywood, you get either one of the two, and if you really, really, really made it, you get both. Like we've seen with Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner, um, another person, another celebrity we've spoken about who uh, has a LaFerrari, he's actually got two, is Lewis Hamilton. Drake's became extremely famous because he had a one-to-one -one replica of this made for his tour. So during his concert, he would have a exact replica, same spec of his LaFerrari floating around the crowd. This was actually a blow up version of his LaFerrari. A lot of people thought it was the real thing. It was so well done, but there's no way you could get insured um, for a concert to have a car, which weighs over a ton, floating above thousands of people. So they made a balloon version of it so that if, God forbid, something were to happen and it falls on the crown, it wouldn't do too much damage to the people underneath it. So that is why his, this car became so famous. He's been seen driving it around in LA and New York. Yellow LaFerrari, only 499 of these made worldwide, with one sitting in the Ferrari Museum as well, so technically, I guess, 500 worldwide. It appears his is in a triple layer yellow, which is a paint job that could cost up to $50,000. Really nice spec, just under 1,000 horsepower, and I'm not sure if he bought his new. He had it pretty early when the LaFerrari came out, so it's not impossible that he bought his new, but as you can tell from the lineup, he doesn't seem to have that many other Ferraris. So the kind of unwritten rule from Ferrari to get a LaFerrari is you need to have owned quite a few of their cars before. He doesn't seem to tick that box, but then again, he is Drake, so maybe they just gave it to him because he's Drake. Lewis Hamilton doesn't seem to have that many um, other Ferraris other than a 509 GTO, yet he has two LaFerraris. So the reason it's interesting whether you got it new or not is because the difference in buying price is massive. There's about 1.5 million euros when it first came out if you got it at list price. But as soon as you bought it secondhand, you're talking more 2.5 million to 3 million. So not sure how much he paid for his car, but what's for sure is he's got a LaFerrari and I believe he still owns that car. And it is the final piece to end this section on. I'm sure he's got plenty of other cars, but it's so hard to know which other ones he actually owns, which are his friends' cars. So these are the ones we picked that we were sure he actually owned and that look really, really cool. So alongside this, he's obviously got his mansions. He's got Air Drake, which is one of the most incredible privately owned planes in the world. He's kind of completed life and I'm sure he'll continue to do so. So massive congratulations to Drake on this awesome car collection. Please comment down below which one you think is your favorite. 
Personally, it's got to be the LaFerrari, especially in this spec, looks awesome. Please also comment down below another celebrity you'd like to see us cover next week, next Sunday. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Cheers, and bye-bye.